This week we've been learning a lot about what it means to trust God and how we can trust God in every situation of our life. As we wrap up, we just want to review uh, like the five lessons that we looked at, which was, who can do it with me? Who can do it with me? You ready? No matter who you are, you can trust God. No matter how we feel, we can trust God. No matter what people do, no matter what happens, no matter where we go, we can always trust God. And it's a great blessing and it's a great thing to remember that in all areas of our lives, we can trust God. And so this morning as we wrap up VBS, we wanted to look at one more way in which we can trust God. We can trust God to provide. And this morning, I have a very special guest with me. Kyle Meek is one of our leaving ministry team members who has been serving this past year on our leadership team as we've built out what youth ministry looks like. And it's been an incredible privilege to get to know Kyle and to see his passion grow as we've been working together on this sermon over the last couple of weeks. I'm excited to have him share alongside of me this morning, and he's going to kick us off as we begin. to uh, get to be up here. Uh, a little scary, a little weird, because I'm like kind of teaching the people that taught me, but that's okay. That is okay. So first I want to start off with, just to make you think a little. So where do you put your trust in this life? You see, as our human nature, we want what's best for us and what we think is best for us. But God knows that that is not what is right. We need to realize that he has a plan for us, and to have that plan put into action, we need to trust God. Now, in today's world, we are to do whatever we feel we want to do. Or this saying that drives me crazy, that we are to do, um, you do you, which just drives me crazy. I hate that. I hate it when kids say it. You do you. No. No, you do what God says is right. If you do you, you get led astray and things don't always work out. This mentality is leading us further and further away from God's word and his teaching, which is in the Bible. We can see this in our schools today. I just came out of high school, and I saw it all the way through, and I hate to say this, but it's not getting better, it's getting worse. One example of this is the theory of evolution that's being taught in the science programs at schools. It's a theory, and it's being taught as truth. And there is no, there is no teaching or even hearing of what the Bible has to say, which we know is true which is the seven-day creation. You see, when we teach this, we're putting our trust in human thoughts and human ideas. And we can see throughout history that they're not always right, and they change all the time to make it look like it is. And we trust these because it's something that our mind can comprehend. It's something that our human brain can easily think of and handle. Because it's a lot more difficult to have trust and faith that there was a God that made this earth. Which I don't know why some people can't. Because it is so complex, how can it all happen just by things hitting each other? At the exact moment, at the right time, and the right temperature, it just seems crazy and unethical to me. But see, we put our trust in it because it's things that we can comprehend. And this shows that we do not always have the answers. We can't always help ourselves by ourselves. God has made us, um, our human nature is to be with others and to talk with other people and to learn with each other. 
This is through trusting God and his word through our, our conversations and trusting each other. So as Christians, we are called to break away from the social normals of this life and that everything is about us when it's not. And we need to trust that God will help us stand out in this world and to trust that we have the ability to, to say no, to say no to what society thinks is right and what society thinks is okay. Whether this is from lying, stealing, doing things that are not right or against God's teachings, which we have and know are true because it's in the Bible and we can trust it. And even though God says these things are wrong, we don't always trust him. And it's because we want to put ourselves in what we know above what we think he knows. We don't trust him all the time, and that can take us off the path to what he wants to provide for you. A story of this that I think uh, gathers this idea is the story of Mary and Joseph and how God called them to do this crazy task. And they had to listen and obey and trust that God had them in his hands the whole time and that God would save them and help them raise Jesus. It's also like when your parents would come to you when you were a little kid and you'd ask them where they're going and that you'd, they'd say, crazy, want to come? As a kid, that would drive me crazy. It's just like, where are you going? <laughs> Tell me, I need to know before I go. Is it something that I'd like? And we see that Mary and Joseph didn't ask. They didn't get frustrated. They trusted God's planning and went along with it. And they stuck together. You see, they showed trust tremendously well with each other and in God, following and listening to God so then it can better the future, showing that if we follow and trust God, he will provide something for us. And he provided something great for Mary and Joseph. This is seen in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And that is seen in the story of Mary and Joseph. They put their hope and trust in God and he provided for them in the future. So just imagine what would happen if Mary and Joseph didn't have that trust in God and took a different path that God had not planned for them. What if Mary and Joseph did end up getting a divorce and Joseph was not Jesus' father? Could his life have been different? And could that have radically changed our faith? And if we didn't have Jesus, what if Mary terminated the pregnancy? What if we didn't have Jesus? Our faith would be completely different. And at some points, you'd think, would our religion even have meaning? Because without Jesus, we have no meaning. We are to trust that God is key in our religion, and he is. And see, Mary and Joseph trusted God and had a tremendous, glorious outcome. And that was Jesus growing up and dying on the cross for us as we are all sinners. See, trust is super important, and it helps us to get where we need to be and to have what God will provide for us trust. It is tremendous. So one of the biggest stories in the Bible of where we see trust come out, 
And as we were talking, one of the stories that we felt that God was leading us to was the story of Abraham and Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. So if you have a Bible with you this morning, either a paper version or electronic version, I would encourage you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 22 as we look at how Abraham and Isaac trusted in God and how God provided. Starting in verse 1, it says this. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Let's pause there for a moment. I don't know about you, but the first few times that I read this story, I was a little confused. Sorry, not a little confused, a lot confused. What's going on? What, why is God asking this? It seems like a weird question for God to be asking. Why would a God who's supposed to be loving, caring, and all the things that we know to be true about God, why would a God like that ask someone to sacrifice their only son and just expect them to do it without question, without thinking about it? It seems like a really weird question, and I think the answer comes from remembering that this isn't Abraham and God's first time getting together and having a conversation. This isn't the first conversation that they've had. Abraham and God have been getting to know each other over about 10 different chapters. And in those chapters, God is constantly calling out Abraham and asking him to trust him. Trusting him with more things. And Abraham doesn't always follow through in trusting God. One of the big ones that we see in the previous chapter is when God promises that Abraham will have a son and that through that son, all the nations will be blessed. Abraham and his wife Sarah are really, really old at this point and look at each other and go, this ain't happening with either one of us. So they come up with their own way of how to fulfill God's promise. They didn't trust God and did something their own way. And it didn't really work out for them. Thankfully, God always has a bigger plan and a bigger purpose in mind. God is always the one who is in control. And when we trust in God, trust in God to provide, we know that God will always provide for us. It doesn't work out for Abraham. And so again, God calls Abraham to trust him again. To trust him, to test him, to see if Abraham really believes that God has everything in his control and that God will always work it out for his purposes and his glory. And that God will always keep his promises. Does Abraham trust God at this point in his life? God calls for Abraham to trust him again. Trust that God will not abandon his promise and will do something. So the question isn't, why would God do this? The question then becomes, do we trust God? Does Abraham trust God in this moment? In verse 3, it continues, and it says, Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set it for the place God had told him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back. Trust is something we always place in the future. Trust is something that is for us to come. We can have trusted But it's hard for us to trust in the past because the past has already happened. We know what happened. Trust is something we have to place in the future because we don't know what's coming. Abraham here doesn't know what's coming, but he trusts that God is a God who will provide. If we look at what Abraham says to his servant, he says something really, really interesting for me. 
In that last sentence, he says, we will go up the mountain. Isaac and Abraham will go up the mountain, and then we will come back down. He doesn't say, I will come back down. He doesn't say, Isaac will come back down. He says, we, two people, will, go, will come back down the mountain. Uh, Abraham is going to sacrifice Isaac, and then somehow Isaac is going to come back down the mountain. Abraham has enough trust in God, enough knowledge in what God can do, that he trusts that regardless of what happens up on that mountain, God will keep his promise, and God will provide a way out of that situation that Isaac will come back down that mountain. He doesn't know what will happen, but he does trust that God will do something. For me, after graduating Bible college, I thought, it would be, uh, I thought it would be super easy to find a job in ministry. Months turned into years, and I got a little bit worried about whether or not I would find a job in ministry, doing youth ministry, doing what I love to do. There were many times in my life when I just wanted God to give me some sort of a roadmap where it was like, hey, in three years, you will apply to Oxbridge Baptist Church and you will get hired there. Don't worry, wait the three years, see you then. But that's not how God works, unfortunately for me. We have to trust that God knows what's going to happen. We have to trust in what God is going to be doing. We have to learn how to trust that God will provide because God knows better and God knows the way. Trusting is not always easy. Trusting isn't always something that comes naturally to most of us. Trust is when you don't know what your next step is, but having faith in knowing that God will lead you where your next step is coming. Trusting that God will provide that next step for you. Let's continue in verse 6. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. He then himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Gone is the man who would take it into his own hands. Gone is the Abraham that we knew a couple of chapters earlier. Now we see Abraham is ready to trust in God and that God himself will provide the offering that is needed. Isaac rightly asks where the most important supply is, the offering. Where is the sacrifice? Instead of Abraham trying to find a loophole or a, a different solution or a way around what God has asked him to do, Abraham trusts that God will provide and that God will work it out for his glory and for his purposes. In Hebrews 11, it talks about this moment when Abraham fully trusted in God. In the hall of faith, Abraham is listed as one of those men who had faith in God to see the end. It says this in 11.17, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham puts his faith in God, trusting that God means what he says he will do. Trusting that God will keep his promises. Trusting that through Isaac, regardless of what happens up on that mountain, through Isaac, Abraham's descendants will be known. Trusting in God means trusting in what he will do. Having the faith and the confidence to know that God will always come through. Let's read um, Genesis 22, 9 to 14. 
When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But an angel of the Lord called out from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thickens was a ram. Caught by its horns, he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. First off, can you just imagine what's going on in Abraham's head as he's heading on that long journey to this mountain? Like all that time to think about what he's done with his son and what he could have done with his son before he has to sacrifice him to God. I know personally, if I had a son, which I don't, I would be absolutely terrified. I would be so scared. I don't know if I'd be able to do it. But Abraham could because he had tremendous trust that God would protect him. This reminds me of a story uh, from my childhood. We would go down to this uh, campground called Word of Life. Uh, it's in New York. It's, it's very beautiful out there. Um, if your family has a chance to go, I recommend it. So we would go uh, there in uh, the Anirondacks of New York, there's uh, waterfalls, and you can go and go cliff jumping. It's actually really fun. I enjoy it. Um, but at the moment, when I was little, I was really scared to go. All my siblings were jumping and having fun, but I was scared of the unknown and what could happen. But thankfully, my father was there uh, beside me to help me, encourage me, and to make sure that I understood that nothing would harm me and that he wouldn't make me do anything that would harm me. He showed me the correct way of where to jump so I wouldn't hit anything that would, could hurt me, how far I should jump, and the same thing is with God. He won't lead you somewhere where you can't get out of it. We are to trust that God will help us and guide us so we can't be harmed. And so if we trust in God, he will give us protection. He will provide us with protection from the things of this world that can harm us. It is seen uh, in verse 9 when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and lay him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham is a man of great faith. He trusted the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, and did not lean on his own understanding of how he could get out of this situation of how he could just bring a, his uh, best ram with him just in case if God didn't provide. You see, in this moment, Abraham shows that with trust, we are still having to do work along the way. See, at this time, Abraham is he's pretty old. And to build an altar, it's made of big rocks. And can, I don't know, when I read this, I could just picture this old man just like shaking down, trying to pick up this rock, pointing at his son to tell him to do the same thing. But it's hard work. And for a man that old, it would have been even harder. 
So, and it's not like God just, it was there all perfect on top of the mountain. And that's not how it works. It's not just like, shazam, here's everything you need. Here's the grand list of what's going to happen in your life. We are to keep going and keep working and to trust that the path that God puts us on will lead us to his grand desire for us, what he has provided for us. And we know it's not easy, and I know it's not easy just from my life, but it's worth it. It is worth it. In Luke 12, 30, it says, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. See, there it states in the Bible that God wants us to seek his kingdom. He wants us to do the work. He wants us to do it. So then we can enjoy his mercy and his grace in heaven with him. And that he will walk beside us through this. And so we are to take action while trusting God. And we can't just stand here and do nothing. We are to go out and trust him in great faith. Now in verse 10, it says, Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Now, just that. When I read that, I pictured him and his son laid there and him just shaking with fear and about to come down and to sacrifice his son. And we know as we read on that, that God comes in and provides a way out. He sends his angel to help Abraham to stop what he was doing. And from this, we know that if we trust God, his hand will be on you 24-7, all the time. And there's no one else like that. In verse 11 and 12, it says, But the angel of the Lord called out from the heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Here we can see that Abraham gave everything to God. The most important thing, which was his son Isaac, who was a blessing to him. God gave him his son. And he is a blessing to Abraham. And he gave it to God and trusted that he would take care of this and that he would provide. See, we should be able to do the same. We should be able to trust God enough that we can give him whatever he wants and that we will know that it will be given to the glory of God's kingdom. We should trust that no matter what happens with it, it's in God's hands, and if it's in God's hands, it's good. So when we trust God, give it all to him. Give everything you've got to him. He doesn't just want a little bit of you, he wants all of you. Then in verse 13, Abraham looked up and there in the thickens was the ram caught by its, his horns. He went over and took it and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So here we see in this story what God provided. God tested Abraham and saw that he trusted him and gave him his great provision of the ram in place of his son. Now, as I was sitting uh, in the back in Pastor Dale's office before the service, and it just caught my attention, the ram took his son's place. 
just like Jesus took our place. It's so cool. This is so early in the, in the story of the Bible, and we're seeing hints of what's to come next. In Psalms 37, 3 to 4, it says, Trust the Lord, do good, and dwell in the land, and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And this is what Abraham did. He trusted that the Lord would do good in this situation, and he did. And what happened? Abraham got to dwell in green pastures. Imagine the relief after this moment happened that he could walk down the mountain with his son instead of having to go back probably crying and weeping that he had to kill his son for God. It's just so cool. And we see this in other stories throughout the Bible, like Noah, the story of Noah. Everyone thought that he was crazy, and he didn't just say, go along with what people are saying and stop. No, he trusted God and kept going. And God provided so much for him when he was doing this. And so, as the story of Abraham had happened as well, we can see that God provides in, in the past and the future. And if he could do it then, he can do it with us now. But all it takes is once again, just a little bit of, tr not a little bit, a lot of trust, all of our trust for God. Everything we have, God asks us to trust him with. Everything we have been given, everything of who we are, God asks that we trust it all to him. When we trust in God, he does provide. As we continue on in verse, th verse 15, it says, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. We've reached the end of our story. God has provided. Abraham's trust has been realized. Abraham is now on the other side of having trusted in God and seeing what God can do. All through this past week at VBS, we saw how God can do some incredible things. Every time someone trusted in God, he moved in a powerful way, a way in which we never could have expected. Trusting in God is sometimes easier to do after we've seen what God can do. After you have seen God move, after you've seen God provide, it's easier for us to trust him just a little bit more. What I find, too, is in most of the stories, God moves in a powerful way much more than anybody could have ever imagined. God always goes that extra step of going, you think I'm going to do this, watch me. I'm going to do it better. And I'm going to do it cooler. And I'm going to do it with a little more awesomeness. Earlier, I talked about trusting in God to provide a job for me, a job in a position that I love. All I really wanted was a job. But God has been so good. I have amazing volunteers who love your kids so much, who are truly invested in the next generation and helping them see who God has called them to be and to see how God is working in their lives. I could never have asked for that, but God provides in incredible ways. I have amazing people that I can hang out with on a regular basis who are following God and walking with God and are there to build me up and help me and move me. All I wanted was a job and I got a whole lot of friends out of it. 
All I wanted was a job, and I have coworkers and people that I can work with who are following God, loving God, and pushing me to be a better youth pastor than I could ever have dreamed of. This is one of the best jobs in the world, and I am so thankful to God that I get to do it here at UBC. In Abraham's story, God gives him so much more as well. The angel of the Lord comes down and again reiterates God's covenant with Abraham. We can see back in Genesis 15, God says to Abraham, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then God said, so shall your offering, offspring be. God then adds to that promise in Genesis 22. A promise that through his offspring, blessings will come through the whole world. And it's through this promise, as Kyle talked about, that we get Jesus. I can't think of anybody better who has blessed the entirety of the world than Jesus Christ. In blessing us, in blessing the opportunity that we have to get to know God, to know that God loves us and cares about us and wants to have a relationship with us. That through what Jesus did for us on the cross, we have an opportunity to build a relationship with God. To get to know God. To be able to trust in Him and see how God will provide for all of us. How God provides for the entirety of the world. Through Abraham, God chooses to bless the entire world. If we look back in Matthew, we can see that Abraham is part of Jesus' lineage. That through Abraham, we are blessed. We are part of what God is working to do. And it's cool to see that back when Abraham was living, God had his plan already worked out. Jesus wasn't some afterthought. He wasn't the secondary option. Jesus was part of the story from the very beginning. And that when we trust God, we can trust that God has that bigger plan in place. And that God has got so much more planned for you than you could ever imagine. We are incredibly lucky to have the Bible with us. Stories and encounters where people trusted in in God and saw it go well. But we also have stories in the Bible where people didn't trust God. And it didn't go well for them. Throughout the Old Testament, we can see the Israelites who either trusted in God or didn't trust in God. And when they did trust in God, it went well for them. And we know that when they didn't trust in God, it didn't always work out for them. In the New Testament, we see the apostles or the disciples who journeyed with Jesus. And when they trusted in Jesus, when they trusted in God, it worked out for them. It went well for them and they were blessed because of it. But there were times where the disciples didn't trust in God, didn't trust in what Jesus had to say, and it didn't always work out for them. Or the early church, as they were starting up, as they were growing, as they were building out who God had called them to be, there were times, again, where they trusted in God and saw that what God could do and believed in God and were able to do some incredible things. But there were also times when they didn't trust in God. And it didn't always work out for them. We have those stories to look back on. And in our own lives, be able to see that when we trust in God, when we follow what God has called us to, it will always work out for us. Not in the way we think it's going to. Not always in a way that we think is going to happen. But that it will always work out because God is with us. And that when we don't trust in God, when we don't follow what God has called us to, it doesn't always work out for us. And in those times, I would encourage you to turn back to God and go, hey, God, I've messed up. How do I get back to what you've called me to? Abraham saw firsthand what it means to trust in God and how God shows up. We, too, have the blessing of being able to trust in God to provide and know that he will always be there for us. So in closing, we see that if God, if we put trust in God, he will provide. 
and that he has provided in the past and will provide in the future. But see, when God provides, it can happen in different ways. From just someone in your life to an event happening to something that you heard or just something that you're feeling eternally that God's putting on your heart. He can provide you in so many different ways. Now, this can uh, be seen in an experience that affected probably everyone in this room. And that was the storm that had hit Oxbridge a couple of months ago. The tornado that had hit this town and surrounding areas that took out hydro, took down trees, moved buildings off their foundations, completely destroyed them. You see, as Christians, we are called to trust that God had a plan and a purpose for these things to provide for the better. I don't know about you, but now after thinking about it, I see that that God did have a purpose for this storm. And I see it as the way that God used it to get us back to normal, to what we call normal now. As we came out of uh, the pandemic and rules were starting to be lifted, and then this storm happened. And how many of you offered your home to people without even thinking about COVID-19? How many of you made meals for people? How many of you let people come into your house to have a shower because they were without power and you had a generator? This helped us come back together as a community. God provided that storm in a way so then we can come back together as he called us to back to community. And we know and we can trust that God had his hand on that storm the entire time and that he had his hand on each family and each person throughout the storm. Also, as, as Christians and in this church, our statement is to make fisher, make, sorry, is to make fishers of men. Meaning that we are to go out and make disciples for God. And what does that take? That takes trust. That takes trust that we will have the right words to say and that he will lead us to the right people. That takes trust. A lot of trust, because it's difficult. It's difficult to be that person to come up and ask to pray for someone or just ask to talk to someone. It takes a lot of trust and a lot of faith to do that. And we can see that in Abraham's story of the amount of trust that he had in God, we should also have. So then we can fulfill this grander purpose that God has for us. We also can see that the world is changing, and I hate to say it again, but it's not really a good way of what the Bible says that it should. But we know that God has a plan for this earth. We can see this in the school systems again, of how our children, well, not my children, but children are being <laughs> put forth with ideas that are wrong. And just hurting their faith and relationship with God. And so we are to put trust in God that he will help us to make these children stronger so then they can stand up to those teachers, stand up to those other kids that are living the wrong way. We're to trust that God will help us throughout this time. And I'm here to tell you that God does have the greater purpose for all of this. And what is that greater purpose? And what's that greater provision at the end? Is that we will be all called home. It's like my uncle told me this past week. When you were young, you wished you could live forever. And you can. You can live forever 
but you have to ask God into your heart. You have to take that leap of faith and trust that God's plan will happen. And all it takes is that one prayer and to live your life out for God. So Oxbridge, congregation, family, friends, it is seen as to what God has brought before us that we need to trust like Abraham and go out into this community trusting that he is with each and every one of us for a greater purpose and that he will provide at the end of all of this. We need to stir up in our country, in our world, a revival of leading back to the word and trusting what it says as we are getting way too far away from what it has taught us. So as we leave this building, we need to trust that God has his hands on our hearts and that his hand will be on our country, on our nation, and on our world. And we are to be trustful and faithful servants for our Heavenly Father. As we close, St. Augustine once said, Faith is to believe in what we do not see. The joy of that faith is to one day see what we did believe. All of us are tasked with putting our faith, our trust, in God so that we too can believe in what we cannot see. But as we've seen today, and many times throughout the Bible, is that God is worthy to be trusted and that God always keeps our promises. And that one day we will be able to see what we did believe. I'm going to invite Kyle back as we pray and end this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this morning and thank you for everyone that's here in person and online and for whoever comes across this video uh, as it will be on YouTube. And if they come across it, it's something that they need that it would bless them. Lord, I just pray that we would go out and we would trust God with all of our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, with all our strength. And that we would not lead on our own understanding of what we think is right, as if we trust in you, you will provide for us. Lord, I pray for um, our, our country and our, our people, as it's scary as how how far away we are going away from your teachings. And Lord, I, I trust in you that you will um, rise up and you will uh, set our hearts on fire and that we will do great things for you with that trust. And Lord, I just pray for strength and health throughout this week for everyone who leaves this building or turns off their TV after this that we would be blessed by you. In Jesus' name, amen.